Coach. All right. Appreciate it. Um, good to see everybody. Of course, we're excited uh, this time of year always to, to get started and, uh, you know, real excited uh, going into year two. Uh, I feel like we've been able to identify a lot of things within our program that we need to get better at. Um, our, our spring workouts have been really, really good. Um, we tried to identify during the fall some of our strengths, some of our weaknesses, and uh, we hopefully uh, filled a lot of the gaps that we felt we need to get stronger, uh, some of our depth, some of our infield position, um, left-handed pitching, and uh, through identification, we've, we really feel good right now about what uh, we were able to do in the fall. So as we've turned so far to the spring, we've gotten two good weekends of inner squads in. Um, we've been able to throw our pitchers and keep them in pretty good rhythm. A couple of them are uh, going to be joining you here in a little bit, uh, and Keegan Thompson and Justin Camp. <clears throat> they can speak more about uh, the rhythm that they feel like they're in. We've been fortunate with weather to get in a little bit of rhythm, and then uh, our, our inner squads have been very competitive. I told the team, and I'll finish uh, opening statement with this. I told our team that <coughs> asked them questions. We're always working on our baseball IQ, and I said, uh, "How do you feel so far?" And I think Damon Hacker was the first one to answer. Played in every inning <coughs> as a freshman last year, and he said, "You know, our scores have been more competitive, four to two, two to one. Our inner squad games have been very competitive." I said, "Okay, that's one way to identify what's another." Um, you know, I said, well, it seems like we're making more plays and you know, pitching's been good. And I said, all those are true, but what I pointed out to him, when you enter squad and you've got somebody like Keegan pitching and his pitch count gets to a certain number, you do what we call in, in baseball practice, you just turn it over. You don't waste time in practice games to go to the bullpen, bring the guy in, let him go through his warm-ups, what you consider probably the slow part of a baseball game when you're doing those pitching changes. You don't do that in practice, you just flip it over. And uh, sometimes guys will earn three outs and sometimes they won't. Um, unfortunately, you'll have to do that several times during the course of a year. I can't remember us having to do that all spring. And we've scrimmaged a lot since we've been able to start our full team practices. There might be one occasion where we had one guy Max out on his pitch count, he had two outs. He still was throwing the ball really well, and I think he'd only given up a run in that inning. So that's the one thing I pointed out to our players that uh, as a coaching staff, with some of the experience we have with Tom Holliday, our new pitching coach, and his, you know, 30 plus, almost 40 years of experience, my 25 plus, um, that, that's really rare when you go through a, a spring and you enter squad as much as we do and you haven't had to flip it over. Guys are earning their outs, guys are playing really well, and I think our hitters are really going to benefit from the way we've pitched the ball so far. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. Just okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Talk about pitching depth. Uh, it's one of the things you talked about, trying to find five or six guys to kind of fill a starting role. How's that come along? Really good. Um, you know, we've identified, of course, everyone knows Keegan, you know, will be um, our number one, and Justin Camp would be in our rotation, except he's been asked to be on the back end, very uh, unselfish young man and, and team first oriented. And uh, we explained it to Justin real simply, you can make the difference in two out of three games uh, instead of one out of three games on the weekend. So I uh, appreciate his attitude and team first um, on that. So when you look at the other guys, I, I think there's four or five guys that can win that that other, the other starting roles. Um, the guys that have thrown the ball extremely well on the front end, of course, have been Keegan. Uh, Cole Lipscomb's thrown the ball extremely well. Trey Wingetter's thrown the ball extremely well. Rocky McCord, I couldn't be more proud of how he's come back. Uh, when a young man turns down the draft to come back for his senior year, um, you know, that, that's pretty special. Uh, I think that says a lot for where he thinks we're going and what can still be done with his development. Um, here, but he's thrown the ball really well for us in a starting role. Kevin Davis has pitched really well for us. Uh, there's going to be several guys. And of course, you know, we get into this first week. We got three games Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We turn around and we got to go on Tuesday. And we got to turn around, we've got to go on Wednesday. So um, Coach Holiday's got it mapped out, and I think he's got a pretty good game plan for what we're going to do. Um, Keegan could answer this. He, he's been going, you know, three days rest and then going three innings again. So it's almost like Friday, we're going to keep him on a pitch count. 
and uh, see how it goes. And with what we expect, and I'm sure with what Keen expects, he might be able to bounce back on a Tuesday for us when we go down to South Alabama. That would pretty much just keep him in a, a preseason type form uh, before we really turn him loose. And then maybe that Tuesday we'll turn him loose as far as getting as many as he wants. But you know, his last outing, those guys went four or five. He'll have to answer. They, they threw the ball really well. Our, our pitching is, uh, it's been pretty special. Same names, just with a little different program. What's been the biggest difference for you from this point last year to now? Our, our attitude, our attitude and our effort. Our effort's been outstanding. Um, you know, not every one of our practices has been great. Our guys have heard about, you know, when we feel like we've fallen short, but our expectations of what we want to do and how we want to do it. And, you know, in, in defense of them, they're always going to be, I think, gauged, not judged, but gauged, you know, have a barometer against teams that have been to Omaha, teams that have been to Super Regionals. And uh, your attitude and your effort has got to be consistent throughout. And our attitude's been great this year. I mean, I couldn't be more proud of where they're at. It's really a special group of young men. It really is. And, um, their, their effort, you know, is has got to be consistent. It's got to be there every day. We came off a really good weekend, a really good weekend. Three outstanding inner squads. Monday's usually our off day. Today wasn't as pleasing as I'd like for it to be, but that's, that's part of our development. So, um, you know, I did mention to my wife, Charlotte, during Christmas break, I was excited to see them and get them back and get going. And uh, she can kind of notice, you know, the, the difference. And, in these guys, how I feel about these guys. And she asked me, do you think that's because of last year coming off a really rough 28-28? And I don't think that's it at all. This is a special group. I think if you, you know, if I were to try to use all 25 years, this is really a special group. It's, uh, they're, they're, they're a close knit bunch. And, uh, and they'll do what you ask them. Sometimes you've got to repeat it to get it right but they'll sure give you the effort to, to do it the first time. So we're not where we want to be, but we're not where we used to be. No, Cody's here, but new faces in the infield and outfield. Just talk about the, the transition for some of those new guys that are going to play a pretty big role. Well, they're going to pay, play a huge role. And again, you're only going to be as good as your middle. We've talked about that before. And, you know, early in the year, it was about giving players confidence, giving them confidence. We had a lot of returning players, and I felt like that was the direction that we needed to go. We've got players that had been here and not had the success that they would like, and you've got to build confidence. Confidence is a funny thing. It's so easily stolen from you in this game, and it's so hard to achieve. And we've had that conversation with these guys. But when you think about Cody Nolf and confidence, you know, I mean, it, it take two weeks of really bad play, and he's still going to be the same confident guy. That's mental toughness. And when you go and you get a junior college player who's played Division One baseball at Pepperdine, and you know, competed against really good teams. I had the fortune of watching him in the other dugout when Pepper and I came to the University of Oklahoma. He's already mentally tough. Now here's the difference, uh, and we'll mention a couple of those other guys other than Cody, but I watched today, and you know, to have the wherewithal just to do some things on your own in the maturity level that you bring is pretty special. And today, after we had a pretty hard workout and it was starting to get towards the tail end, um, he had somebody actually phone going him during batting practice some extra ground balls. And uh, Coach Holiday and I were noticing the sun was starting to set a little bit, and it'll peer through Plainsman Park a little different at times for you. And then if you know Cody, he's a baseball player. He's going to do things the right way. Well, he took his hat off. That's not something that he would do. I haven't even had a conversation with him about this. But he took his hat off. And Coach Holiday goes, I wonder what that's about. And I said, I think that's about him wanting to have to deal with the glare and not having anything that's going to help him. And he looked at me, because you think that's what it's about? And I said, I, I don't know what that it's about for sure. So, and I, you know, if you ask him, he might give you a different answer. But what I saw, I saw him working really hard at doing some things that he didn't feel like he did very well today. That's a maturity level that you recruit or develop. We haven't had an opportunity to develop that long enough here. So we've recruited some of that, and that is helping. I tell you what, you can ask any of the players that are with him or any of the other guys in that clubhouse, and they'll tell you the same thing. They've probably never been around a guy that prepares himself harder each and every day. I mean, his pre-practice routine is, is crazy. I mean, I, it might be like he's getting ready to go dance with the stars. It's crazy 
what he does with all his little leg kicks and all that kind of stuff. So he uh, he really prepares himself well. He's got he's got a very mature uh, attitude about it, and it I think it plays into Anthony Greer. It plays into uh, Damon Hacker. It'll play into other people's game. And the last thing, very quickly, is the other junior college players is um, Alex Polston, shortstop in junior college, Seminole Junior College, recruited Division One, turned down Oklahoma State. Uh, really wanted to go to another school there in that same state. Uh, they didn't need that particular position. That coach came to Auburn, and now he's at Auburn, and he's made the transition to third. And you know, he came in, he played short with Cody, and I think that without him saying or you know, he'll still go work out there at times. But it's pretty clear when he looks over there, he realizes Cody needs to be at short, and he needs to be working at third. He's done a great job. Ricky Negron backs him up at third base. He's a junior college transfer from Florida, but. High school in New York, he's got some power. He's a good player. Uh, Melvin Gray's a guy that's been working at second base from South Mountain Junior College. He's electric on a base path. I think he's really going to come on as a hitter, but uh, he's a pretty special infielder. He's going to get a lot of playing time. Damon Hacker, of course, returns after playing every inning. So that just tells you there's five guys right there filling those three positions. And uh, my goodness, all of them probably except Ricky could play short if they had to. Um, but, you know, we're planning on Cody being the guy to, to get that done. So uh, we've got depth. I mean, Kyle Dees comes to us. He can play any of those positions right now. We got him working at first base a little bit, and he's looked great over there. It, someone asked me, is that the shortest first baseman you've ever had? And I said, no, we had a guy back in the day named Freddie Rodriguez. We called him Boom Boom. So he uh, he was a little bit smaller than Dees, but he could really play. True story. That was his nickname. So about the outfield? You know, if you do, are your three starters settled in the yeah. outfield? Yeah, we, we, we like the guys. Uh, you know, coming back that we had there, we, we feel like they're uh, the maturity level again. You know, even when you think about Jordan Ebert leading the conference, um, he just is something different about him, you know, watching him and how he's going about his business. And uh, But we've got him moved to right field. He seems to play better there. He feels more comfortable over there. Anthony can speak to this, but I've seen him be very comfortable. Anthony don't like any walls, he, he you know. He don't mind there being players there, but he just wants to run. And with the ability to run, I think he feels free in center field. So he's looked really good for us there. Tried to knock down the center field wall uh, to where it kind of took my breath away because I was concerned, but he bounced right off of it and bounced up and was ready to go. But he can really go get a ball. And and then uh, Sam Gilligan, uh, Bo Decker, uh, there's going to be several guys that can fill that spot in left field. But uh, Sam's a returning guy and got a really high ceiling. He's just got to put it all together. And, uh, keep developing, getting better each and every day. But it, it's a veteran outfield. Um, they play to their ability. It's going to be a strong set for us, no doubt. All right. That it? Yes. All right. Thank you, guys.